We are. We are scientists. We are, are researchers. researchers. We are mathematicians. We, we are, are engineers. engineers. We are women in engineering. We are problem solvers. We are collaborators. We, we are, are friends. friends. We are competitors. We are community. We are diverse. We, we are, are driven. driven. We are confident. We are adventurous. We are curious. We are dreamers. We are fun. We are volunteers. We are leaders. We are entrepreneurs. We are student athletes. We are rocket scientists. We are, we are engineers. engineers we are safe. We are sweet. We are ship. We are she is Emmy. We are Goldie Craft. We are resilient. We are hopeful. We are interdisciplinary. We are inspiring. We are CSE. We are CSE. We are CSE. We are CSE. We are graduating. Dean Kava, members of uh, faculty of the uh, School of Physics and Astronomy, students from the School of Physics and Astronomy, welcome to this evening's celebration of the senior uh, graduation for this year. It has been an, quite the unusual year, and we're going to hear a lot about it tonight. I'm Professor Jeremiah Mans, and I'm the Director of Undergraduate Studies for the Physics Program. I'd like to get the program underway for this evening, and I'm pleased to announce our first speaker, uh, Professor Paul Kroll, who's the head of the School of Physics and Astronomy. Professor Kroll has been a faculty member in the department since 1997 and head of the school since 2019. He's an expert on spin dynamics and transport in solids. Professor Kroll holds a PhD from Cornell University and a bachelor's degree from Swarthmore College. Professor Kroll? Thank you, Professor Mance. So it's really wonderful to see so many of you after 15 months, both uh, students and colleagues. Um, and this is a class, uh, many familiar faces from actually the last uh, class I taught in 2018, um, the thermodynamics class. Uh, so we're celebrating tonight uh, the graduation of what is actually one of the largest classes in the history of the school. Uh, you've excelled in the classroom, and um, many of you have already published papers, and you've launched at least one satellite into space, so that's pretty good. Um, and although I cannot claim in a quantitative sense that you're the biggest or the best class, I, like a good experimentalist, I don't have the data, so I shouldn't make absolute statements, I can say with, with certainty that um, over the last 15 months, uh, you faced the most difficult situation I've seen in my career and probably for academia uh, in the U.S. since the Second World War. And um, that's, that's uh, truly a, a, an accomplishment. So although there's no doubt that the impact of the pandemic on your education has been negative, I, we all would have hoped to have been together over the last, uh, over the last year, um, I hope that you've found the opportunities that you have had at the university uh, memorable and rewarding. And above all, I hope that you've had the opportunity to make some friendships that will, will last for the rest of your lives. Uh, above all, I should say above all, but among all those things, I, I hope that you've gotten to experience the joy and fun of physics and astrophysics. It actually has been a remarkable four to five years for our field. You've been, you know, front lines on things like the discovery of, of uh, gravity waves and, and their consequences. Um, some things have been in the news just the last month. So I think it's a very, uh, it's a really exciting time to be starting a career in physics or astrophysics. Um, there's also a growing realization that uh, physics and physicists 
can contribute in any number of ways in all sorts of uh, jobs and occupations in society. So uh, I look forward to seeing, uh, seeing you associated with those in the years to come. So I would like to give some thank yous. Uh, first of all, um, to my colleagues in, in the school who have done so much over the last 15 months to keep things going, both in education and our research activities. Uh, a few shout outs to our academic program staff. Of course, there's uh, Kurt Wick and Kevin Booth, who uh, you've all gotten to know through the famous or infamous methods of experimental physics. Um, they've been uh, incredible in their adaptations to the pandemic. Uh, a bit more behind the scenes, but also critical, are uh, Brian Anderson and Sean Alveston, uh, who have played a complementary role to Kevin and Kirk, but in the lower level labs. And they also performed some miracles over the last years. And Jennifer Kroschel in the front office has kept it all going. Uh, at a distance, even when faculty have either lit fires or provided plenty of oxygen to keep them going. Right. Um, I'll say one more thank you on, on the sort of administrative side, administrative faculty side, and that is to Professor uh, Jeremy Manns, uh, who is stepping down this year after nine years as um, Director of Undergraduate Studies, and I don't think he signed up to have this happen right at the end of it. I will say that when we uh, went over to um, remote study last March, in a few days he performed some miracles and, and uh, getting things up and, up and running in a very different mode of operation. So his expertise, advice, and support have been really important to the school and to all of you. Many of you have had him as your advisor. Okay. But most importantly, I would like to thank you for all of your contributions to the school, the college, and the university, as well as the families and friends who have supported you in your endeavors, and particularly in the last 15 months when uh, you might have been closer together than you wished. Um, I hope you get to spend some time with them tonight uh, or in the near future, and I genuinely regret that we can't have a family with us in, in the room on this very important occasion. Um, and since I've seen less of you in the last year, and uh, all my colleagues have, it's even more important that you stay in touch and uh, keep us informed about your endeavors and accomplishments over, um, over the next phases of your life. All right. um, you're about to join a network of extremely accomplished alumni, and uh, all of you will play a role in advancing science and engineering in the country and in the state of Minnesota, keeping people informed about, um, about the role of the university and the college, and finally, the School of Physics and Astronomy. So thank you very much. Uh, congratulations. Um, and I look forward to hearing all about your work in the years ahead. Thank you, Paul. Actually, thank you very much for those kind words. Uh, it gives me great pleasure to introduce our next speaker, Dean Moscava. As Dean, Dean Kave is the Chief Executive Officer and the Chief Academic Officer of the college. So he provides strategic and intellectual leadership, administrative oversight, and works to advance the college's research, teaching, and service. In the last year during this uh, pandemic period, I've actually been meeting on a nearly weekly basis uh, with the Dean as we discuss what steps we need to take to make sure that we provide the best education as we can, that we can uh, through this challenging time. And it's been really remarkable to see his leadership through this period. Dean Kava has served in various roles in the college for more than 45 years. Before becoming Dean, he served as Associate Dean for Research and Planning for 13 years. And prior to that, he was head of the uh, Department of Electrical and Computer Engineering for 15 years. He is highly regarded for his research in statistical signal processing, image processing, and the, their applications, specifically in sensing biomedicine and wireless communications. Dean Kava holds a PhD in electrical engineering from Purdue, a master's degree from the University of California, Berkeley, and a bachelor's degree from Purdue. Dean Kava?
Thank you very much, Professor Mons. <clears throat> well, hello, graduates. Good to see you all. Congratulations on your commencement. Astrophysics and physics classes of 2021, you have achieved a tremendous feat. We know the dedication, self-discipline, and sacrifice required to normally earn a degree in the College of Science and Engineering. But these are not normal times, and you have graduated during a very difficult period. What this pandemic has reinforced, though, is the critical work of scientists, scientists and engineers. With your graduation from CSE, you are now among them. You are needed your contributions can make a huge difference. The commencement is the college's happiest and most important occasion of the year. It is a symbol of accomplishment of you, the graduates, and a milestone as you move on, you move on to the world beyond the university. It is a time to celebrate your achievement with your parents with your family and friends. I am very sorry that we are not able to be together in one ceremony as a CSC class of 2021, along with your parents, friends, and many representatives of the faculty. But please join me with a round of applause to thank all who have supported you during your time at the University of Minnesota. Although you're finishing one chapter of your life now, you're also beginning another. Step into the new chapter boldly, as boldly as you have faced this challenging year. Many of you will enter the workforce at a very uncertain time. Some of you clearly will enter graduate school or other professional programs. But don't forget, you're resilient, and as scientists, you are problem solvers. At this critical moment in our country and in countries around the world, we need problem solvers. We need problem solvers like you, who are resilient, who can adapt and adjust on the fly, who can think and innovate in a crisis. On behalf of everyone in the College of Science and Engineering, I want you to know that we are very proud of your achievement. You are our next innovators, thought leaders, and some of you entrepreneurs who will help us through this current crisis, the next one, and many others to come. You are our hope for a brighter future. I remind you that although our graduating seniors now been honored, you as graduating seniors have been honored for your accomplishments, you do not officially have degrees just yet. Only the Board of Regents has the authority conferred degrees. I wish you all the best after graduation, and I hope you continue to stay engaged <clears throat> with your department, your school, your college, and your university. Congratulations, astrophysics and physics classes of 2021. Stay strong and stay safe. Thank you, Dean Kava. So now I'd like to direct your attention uh, to the video system, where we'll be screening some messages from faculty and staff uh, from the school to our graduating students. Hi, everyone. Congratulations. I had the great pleasure of teaching uh, some of you uh, over the last couple of years 
and it was a real delight. And I've been thrilled to hear how well all of you have done over this last very difficult year. Uh, I wish you all the very best uh, as you leave the university and continue on with your lives. And thanks again for the chance to teach you. Bye-bye. Y'all are the 2021 graduating class of physics majors. Part of your third year and your final year of your education has been one you will never forget. In fact, it is a year the world will never forget. You should be proud you found your way to complete this important part of your life, even with all the challenges you faced. Be proud you faced them and overcame them. Most of you I know from methods of experimental physics, and I want to assure y'all of one thing. I want to assure y'all I will keep my promise. We will have a barbecue. Look for an email in the next few months, and I hope to see you there. Remember, no matter what gets thrown at you, life is good. Dear astrophysics graduates, I'm Professor Lilia Williams. I'm Professor Bob Geertz. And as directors of undergraduate studies, we're delighted to congratulate you on your successful com completion of your degree. And we would like to wish you the very, very best in your future endeavors. My best wishes to you as well. And congratulations to everyone again. Thank you to you all. Hi, congratulations to all of you that are graduating this year. It was a privilege to be your teacher and also have to say I learned a lot from all your questions. I hope you find a rewarding career and hopefully have a very interesting life. And if you should ever get stuck with problems, just remember what you learned in the Methods of Experimental Physics course. What I mean by that no, it's not about Thevenin's equivalent circuits or that you never should quote the reduced chi squared without mentioning the degrees of freedom. What I mean is that hopefully what you learned in the class is if you ask the right person, be it a Kevin, a Dan, an Elias, the right question, you can often get out of a slump. And the second thing that I have to say, is to say, if you ever get stuck, remember not just that you survived one of the toughest, most difficult courses, but you made it during the height of COVID. So, I mean, how much worse can you get? You've done it all. So congratulations and stop by in the future. Love to hear from you guys. Good luck. Bye. Dear students, it's a pity that I cannot be there with you to celebrate this special moment. I'd like to congratulate you for this achievement. This has been challenging and testing times, and I commend you for your perseverance and accomplishments. I know there will be many more challenges in your professional life that is starting now, but remember all the adversities that you overcame to get here. And keep in touch with us. We love to hear the success stories of all our students. We're very proud of all of you. And, you know, for those of you that took my 4002 class, Remember this important thing I told you. There are 10 types of people in the world. The ones that know binary system and the ones that don't. Bye. So we're still teaching seven and equivalents. Mental note. When I first got here, I'll go off script for a moment. When I first got here, I was assigned to teach MXP with Kurt. And I go downstairs, I open the lab man. I had no idea what seven equivalents were when I started my faculty position. Um, one of the uh, great pleasures of this modified format is the uh, greater opportunity to hear from some of our own graduates. So it's my pleasure to introduce two. The first is Meredith Weber. Meredith, Meredith is an astrophysics major from Fairball, Minnesota and she has been a project manager in the small satellite lab, and she's currently uh, uh, completing her astrophysics thesis, um, working with, with Professor Pat Kelly on supernova. Meredith. Hi, 
everyone. Um, I'm really honored to be asked to stand up here today when there's so many highly accomplished students to choose from in the department. Um, as I reflected on the last four years of hard work and look forward to graduation, there are a few ideas and moments that stand out to me that will be good to keep in mind as I look forward to life as a college graduate. I'd like to present them to you much like we've been taught to approach most physics problems, especially by Professor Chin. Number one, draw a picture. I know we all have those moments that stand out to us when we think back as defining moments of our college journeys. They probably look quite different from person to person. For my lab partner, Amanda, it might be the day we were in MXP lab looking at signals on the oscilloscope and she exclaimed, it's so cute. <laughs> For some, it might be a wild night enjoyed as a well or possibly not so well deserved break from studying. <laughs> For me, I think of all those study sessions in the SPS room where I finally got to know many of the other physics and astrophysics majors. Another place where many of us illustrated our college careers were the student groups and research opportunities we took part in. For me, those look like working with Dr. Rudnick as a baby physics student learning how to code in Python, getting involved in Astro Club, the cool place to be an astro nerd, applying to NASA internships at the encouragement of Professor Gleisner and my friends, as well as becoming project manager of the small satellite lab after meeting Jenna, the previous project manager, sophomore year, and thinking I would never want to be that busy. <laughs> These are the things that help me draw a picture of what I might want to end up doing with my astrophysics major someday when I'm finally done with school. Whatever your student groups or groups, group or groups were, um, I hope they helped you do the same. If they didn't, I recommend that you keep seeking out opportunities to test new skills in order to sketch out a picture of what excites you and makes you happy. After all, there are multiple ways to skin the cat when it comes to physics problems, and the same could be true for your path to success. That leads me to the next step of solving a physics problem with Professor Chin. Number two, F equals MA. This isn't always, always true. So sometimes it's harmonic oscillators or the energy conservation principle, but all these laws are tools every physicist knows. A widely applicable law of life is that it is difficult. Our class might know this better than any class before us. We've made it through a year of mostly online classes as well as tumultuous events across the world. But here we are, still achieving what we set out to do. We didn't do it alone. Every physicist knows F equals MA, and every person shares the knowledge that life is challenging. Support systems and collaboration are also a fundamental law of getting through life. We're talking more like the energy conservation principle now. Without Caleb's hard work to get the major wide group chat going, I don't think I would have done as well in any of my classes since then. I'm really going to miss you all this fall when I take stat therm without you. So I'm gonna to have to take a leaf out of Caleb's book and start my own group chats. There have been many a moment over the past few years where I needed to remind myself of Dean Skrykowski's orientation speech where he said, we are smart enough. Or where I needed to call my parents or talk to a friend because I felt like I just wasn't cut out for physics. I also have to give Professor Pulaski a shout out for the day he sent me an encouraging email after happening to find me having a breakdown in the physics tutor room. <laughs> But the bottom line is that I made it. I still have my senior thesis to go, but I think I made it. You've all made it. <laughs> and if we can get through a physics and our astrophysics degree in one of the top departments in the US, we can get through quite a lot. So F equals MA is an almost applica always applicable law to physics problems. Life will always be challenging, but armed with our physics problem solving strategies, we are tough enough, smart enough, flexible enough to rise to the challenge. We won't be able to do it alone. Physics is a collaborative science but we will get through it. And this is where the final lesson comes in, the final step of a physics problem, usually the algebra. Number three, do it carefully. When I put this speech together, I just thought, hmm, that's not gonna work. I don't do anything carefully anymore. <laughs> anymore, because if you know me at all, you know that my last year did not go according to plan whatsoever. But my sister reminded me that sometimes you can do things carefully and not have to plan them two years in advance. So it can mean just thinking through a problem with reason and direction in the moment. So if all your best laid plans were upended due to COVID or some other crazy happenstance in your life, um, just keep moving forward with reason and direction and don't forget to carry the sign. In summary, I'd like to acknowledge everything each one of us overcame in order to be here today. I'd like to thank those of you who inspired me to work harder and also to have more fun. I'd like to thank our professors for providing a high class education even throughout the past year. And I'll leave you with the reminder to approach challenges in life armed with the problem solving strategies we mastered in our physics classes. Thank you.
Thank you, Meredith. Our second speaker is Amanda Gadalamas. Amanda is from Palo Horizonte, Brazil, and is one of the winners of, of this year's Hegstrom Prize, which is given to graduating seniors in recognition of outstanding accomplishments. Uh, she's also been uh, a member of the small satellite team. She's currently pursuing research in quantum information, uh, which she plans to continue in her PhD work at the University of Illinois. Amanda. Good evening, everyone. Three years ago, I was at the airport with my mom, almost embarking to fly to Minnesota for the first time. And I was panicking. Those of you who know me uh, know that I like things done in very particular ways with very few changes. I sit on the left side of the room, second row, chair number 17 every time. And whenever that spot is taken, I'm left wandering the room for a good five to 10 minutes. So moving to another country to pursue physics was quite a big change for me. Um, I was started to question if it was reasonable, if the investments were worth the risk, and if I was good enough. But any doubts I had dissolved in my first year. One of the first classes I took was Physics 2201, Baby Thermal, uh, taught by Professor Paul Crow. It was not an easy course, and it was the first major specific course that most of us were taking. So I was very intimidated at first. But the lectures were absolutely amazing. The discussion sessions really helped me improve my understanding of the material, and Professor Kroll was always willing to discuss things further in office hours. In my first year, I also became involved with a small set, which the incredible Dr. Lindsay Gleisner leads. The academic challenges and research opportunities that I found here were better than anything I could have imagined. But I, I would only be telling half the story if I didn't mention the people that made the experiences here at the School of Physics and Astronomy even more memorable and meaningful. When I came here, I expected to learn about quantum mechanics, electromagnetism, and thermodynamics. What I did not expect to learn was how much of a collective effort physics really is. And that became one of my favorite things about physics. Researchers collaborate all the time, and so do the students. You already know that I loved math methods with Yan Tian, a somewhat unpopular opinion. But let me tell you why. I would not have learned half as much or had half as much fun if we had had a, um, an easy homework that I could solve on my own. Instead, we had challenging problem sets that required most of us to gather in the SPS room and work on the problems on the whiteboard for long periods of time. And that was so much fun. When we finally got the problems, it was almost cathartic. And I made great friends that way. I made friends that I admire immensely for their intelligence, communication skills, dedication, and character. And I still don't know how some of you can make memes that fast. It's truly an amazing skill. And finally, I couldn't not mention MXP in this speech, because that was the experience that made me even more certain that I did the right thing for me by coming here. Do you, do you know how hard it is to get me excited to go to a lab class, an experimental physics class? It's, it takes a lot, and that's exactly what Dan, Kurt, and Kevin did. <laughs> I was surprised to see how much I put my heart and soul into my XP experiment, as I am sure most of you also did with your projects. Something that started as a class project became a central object of scientific interest for me, and I believe for my classmates as well. And I think that really shows the excellence of the MXP course that Dan, Kevin, and Kurt worked so hard to always keep improving. Of course, as most of you know, I was in the class that was interrupted by COVID, and I did not get to complete my experiment. And I was devastated because it had become my thing. I woke up thinking of it, I spent most of my time in the lab, and suddenly there was nothing. And when that happened, the MXP team was there for the rescue and they quickly scrambled a new plan that would give us the best learning outcomes possible within the new constraints. I think I speak for everyone when I say that we deeply appreciate and admire all the effort the MXP team has put into the course. So as terrifying as it was to fly to this cold, flat place that is Minnesota, my experience here was so much better than I could have ever dreamed of. 
And it is all because of the faculty, staff, and students that accompanied me in this journey, and the friends and family that supported me along the way. So once again, congratulations on your graduation, and thank you for making me feel welcome in this foreign land that I now also call home. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Meredith and Amanda. So we're now going to proceed with the recognition of our graduates. <clears throat> and so for this, I have to give some instructions. Uh, when your row is asked to cross the stage, uh, we ask that maintaining your social distance between you and the next student, um, you do so by using the, the arrows on the floor. Um, please wear your mask. Uh, when you reach the table, um, there'll be a, a card um, hand the card with your name to the person at the table, who I believe is, is uh, Professor Manns. And as you get on stage, your name will be read, and you'll stand on the X on stage. With two Xs. No. Oh, no. That breaks. Uh, the, uh, one's yellow. Um, uh, and stand there, and their photographer will uh, will take your picture, and then um, one of the uh, faculty will help uh, direct you back to your seat. Uh, so with this, uh, we'll we'll now proceed uh, with the first the um, names of the people who are not here, and then the rest of the ceremony. Thank you. So we'll begin with the names of those who were not able to be here this evening. Andrew Jerome Barker. Corbin Condon. Cordell Koss. Victoria Crary. Sam Dietrich. Terrence Gray. Zong Yi Jiang, Charles Kemper, Scarlett O'Donovan, Jir Peter, Kaai Peterson, Charlton Wake. Jinjo Wong, and Stephen Winship. Amanda Gato Lamas. Meredith Weber. Joseph Barber. Leonardo Clark. Elena Corona. Joseph Dill. Ann Dewar. Brenton Ayler. Matthew Iwanaka.
Justin Fine. Forbes Geffrey. Matthew Grandstrom. Sylvia Griffith. Spencer John Grzinsic. Daniel B. Helgeson. Anthony Herbin. Bryce Johnson. Josh Kulkas. Tommy Kwan. Aaron Lay. Billy Lee. Caleb Conrad Medchill. Ian Morrissey. Jessica Nee. Christopher John Leisha O'Driscoll. Alex Ati. William Pinal. Jeremy Flipson. Kiet Pham. Garrett Reichenbach. Thomas Richardson. Ethan Rodefelt.
Gabriel Spahn. Rory Spanier. Sun Hao Ya. Seth Thompson. Alan Edward Turnbull. Daniel Urbanski. Sarah Ong Cha Wei. Alvary Woldu. Chen Yu Yu. Let us congratulate our graduates. Mm -hmm. Next comes the step to which Dean Kava alluded before. Um, and I'm uh, pleased to introduce uh, via video the uh, Ken Powell the Chair of the Board of Regents, who will confer your degrees. Greetings, graduates and families, faculty and staff, distinguished guests, everyone joining us. I am honored to preside at this commencement on behalf of the University of Minnesota Board of Regents. To the graduates, I extend congratulations. Through your talent, hard work, and determination, you have earned this day of recognition. We not only celebrate your academic accomplishments, but also the potential you have to make a positive difference in the next stage of your lives. You'll be contributing to your communities, the state of Minnesota, the nation, and even the world. To all the family and friends joining from near and far, thank you for the countless ways you've supported these students as they earned their academic degrees. In keeping with commencement tradition, Will the graduates please rise as they are able? Upon the recommendation of the faculty and by the authority of the regents, I now confer upon you the degrees for which you have qualified. Congratulations to every single one of you. Congratulations and thank you again. Uh, so uh, well, let's go all give each other, all graduates participating, a round of applause. So um, I've been instructed to give instructions on, on how to depart. And basically, it's the faculty on the stage and the front of the room will leave and then um, you will go out by your row number and the uh, faculty will help guide you. Um, on your way out, uh, please pick up, I think they're back there somewhere, right? They've got it. What? Don't forget, they've got it. they picked them up already. They picked them up already. Do not forget to, pick, uh, to take your, your mug. 
Um, that is a thank you from the School of Physics and Astronomy. Uh, and although this is a time to celebrate, we've also been asked not to congregate right in the, right in front of McNamara. Um, there is, uh, we can do directed diffusion up the scholars walk if you wish, towards, um, towards the physics buildings. Um, but please uh, uh, be safe, uh, enjoy the rest of your time uh, this evening, and of course um, uh, with your friends and family over the next several days, even if they weren't able to be here tonight. Thanks again.